chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again we are aware of two methods of solving a quadratic equation so far one method is the direct shortcut method which i have already explained and the second method is the method of using the quadratic formula now you must be wondering or thinking which method to use when that is one question that must be in your mind so to answer that question i am proposing a practical strategy for solving a quadratic equation when you meet a quadratic equation in an examination this strategy will help you clear all the doubts about which method to use and which when when to use it this strategy involves three simple steps the first step is to reduce the quadratic equation reduce to the form ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 first of all you should reduce your quadratic equation to the standard form if the quadratic equation is not already in this form so what do i mean by that suppose a quadratic equation looks like this now this quadratic equation has a fraction part with it it is better to convert this equation into a standard form like this many times a equation is already in this form so you don't have to follow step 1 you can skip to step 2 i will explain all three of these steps with a practical example also but let me first of all summarize all the three steps that are required to solve a quadratic equation with the practical strategy the second step is to try to find out two numbers whose sum is equal to b and whose product is equal to ac try to find out two numbers whose sum is b and whose product is ac in other words spend a few minutes or a few seconds of your time to try to solve it by the direct shortcut method your attempt should be to go for the direct shortcut method so this should be your second step try to spend some time make guess and if you are unable to apply this direct shortcut method and then in the third step you should finally switch over to the b square minus 4ac that is you should then try to solve it by the quadratic formula if things don't work by step 2 then they are 100% sure to work by step 3 in this way at the end you will surely get the solution to your quadratic equation now today i will take up this through complex examples to show you how practical method can be used to solve questions that were asked in the previous years examination i have taken all questions from the previous years examination they will help you know the level of the questions that are being asked and how to solve them we will start with our question 5x square by 3 plus 4x plus 35 equal to 0 now this quadratic equation has to be solved and we can see that this is not in a standard form an equation in a standard form looks like this ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 where a b and c are whole numbers which could be 
माइनस और पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स सो इन स्ट्रिक्ट टर्म्स ए बी सी एंड सी शुड बी इंटीजर्स एंड दे कुड ऑल्सो बी इेशनल लाइक स्केयर रूट ऑफ टू बट द रेसी प्रोकल शुड बी मिसिंग दैट इज दे शुड नॉट हैव एनी डिनोमिनेटर्स वी शुड ट्राई टू फ्री ऑफ एनी डिनोमिनेटर्स बाय मल्टीप्लाइंग द इक्वेशन सुटेबली सो दैट एवरीथिंग कम्स इन द सेम स्ट्रेट लाइन एज फ्लैट नंबर्स सो इन दिस केस वी सी दैट थ्री इज कमिंग इन द डिनोमिनेटर सो वी हैव टू गेट रिड ऑफ थ्री फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन now one thing we know is that if you multiply both sides of this equation by any number the equation is going to remain the same this is the first axiom or the first principle that you should be aware that an equation can be modified in any way you like provided you multiply both sides with the same number so if i multiply this whole equation by let us say 10 the equation would become 50 by 3x square plus 40x plus 350 equal to 0 you can see that the coefficient in this case is 5 by 3 in this case it is 50 by 3 so even though the multipliers of x square x and the constant term they are different in both the equations but these two things they represent one and the same equation because the second equation has been obtained by multiplying the first equation by a constant number so this very important principle that if you multiply any equation by a constant number then the equation effectively remains the same the answer of this equation and the answer of this equation is going to be exactly same so as far as the answer is concerned both the equations are exactly same so if this principle you understand then we can utilize this same principle to get rid of this 3 so how do we do it obviously we can see that if we multiply the entire equation by 3 like this 3 multiplied by 5x square by 3 plus 4x plus 35 equal to 3 multiplied by 0 we have multiplied both sides by 3 this equation is not disturbed so what we get is 5x square plus 12x plus 35 multiplied by 3 whatever it is equal to 0 now this equation is a derivative of the original equation so the solution to this equation and the solution to this equation are exactly same before i solve this let me take one more example on the side bar suppose the equation had been 5x square by 3 plus 4x by 5 plus 35 by 2 equal to 0 this equation is difficult to solve by both the methods that is the shortcut method and by the quadratic formula without reducing this equation to this form if we don't reduce this equation to this form then it won't be possible to solve this equation by any of the two methods so we have to reduce it to this form how do we do we have to get rid of 3 5 and 2 so how do we get rid of 3 5 by 2 first of all find the lcm of 3 5 and 2 the lcm is going to be we can see that it is going to be 30 so once you know the lcm then you multiply both sides by the lcm so if we multiply both sides by the lcm we will see that this whole equation we can get rid of the denominators so i am writing it like this so 13 to 3 will be 10 so it will become 50x square 
because 10 into 5 is 50 add 5 will go with 6 6 and 4 will be 24 and 2 into 15 30 will go by 15 so what we will get is 15 by 35 whatever it is equal to 0. So as I am stressing here is that in case you get a quadratic equation that involves denominators then you should find out the LCM of the denominators and multiply the entire equation by that LCM. Your equation will ultimately transform to a flat straight equation that can be solved by using any of the two methods. Ok, if you understood this one, let us now revert back to our equation. Here we have 3 into 5x square by 3 plus 4x plus 3 35. This we multiplied by 3 because there is only one figure that is appearing, multiply it entirely by 3. So this is the flat equation that we get. Now as our step 2, we will try by the direct shortcut method. So we have to find out two numbers whose sum is equal to 12, this 12 and product is equal to 35 into 3, this one multiplied by 5. So let us now open this 35. So this will become 5 into 7 into 3 into 5. So these are the prime factors of this product. We have to partition this into such a way so that the sum of the two partitions is equal to 12. Now which is the smallest pair? The smallest pair is 3 into 5. So or it is 15. So it means if we take 2, 2 of these in one compartment then we can never get a number whose sum will be 12 because this is greater than 12. The other is going to be 35 obviously we can't get it. This means we'll try it by taking 3 to one side. If we take 3 to one side then these will become greater. If we take 5 to one side these become greater. If we take 7 these become greater. So it seems that it is not possible to find a number, two numbers whose product is equal to this number and whose sum is equal to 12. I have orally tried to find two partitions out of this but I have not been able to find out a partition the sum of which is equal to 12. This means my shortcut method is not working in this case or at least I am unable to find out two numbers whose sum is 12 and whose product is this. So I, if I fail by doing that then as per my strategy we will now move on to step 3. If you are having any doubts about this then you should go and check my previous lecture where I have explained this whole process in detail and I have just fast gone through the whole system. So the whole point is that I am unable to find two numbers whose sum is 12 and whose product is 35 by 3 into 5. Now let me take to my step 3. I will find the discriminant d equal to b square minus 4ac. So what is the discriminant? b in this case is 12. So it will be 12 square minus 4 multiplied by 5 which is a and c is 35 by 3. So this will become 144 minus this will be 20 and 20 into 3 is going to be 60 and 60 has to be multiplied by 35 which I will do on this side. So I will perform a calculation of this. It is something like 2100. So which turns out to be negative less than 0. So this means that this quadratic equation has no solution in real numbers. So no solution is possible for this quadratic equation. If a question comes for this quadratic equation and some options are given, 
then you will obviously tick mark that it doesn't have any solution in real numbers. And how do we ascertain that? First of all, we converted it into a flat equation. Then we applied the step 2 to guess out two numbers whose sum is 12 and product is this. We failed and ultimately we calculated D and we found that that D is turning out to be negative. And this means that if D is negative, then obviously this equation has no solution in real numbers. So this is how we apply all the three steps and I've shown with a practical example. Let us now take up another question. These are all questions taken from the past year's papers. Now this is another question. So our step 1 is already done for us. The equation is already flat. So we don't have to do anything for that. For step 2, we will spend some time to find out two numbers whose sum is equal to minus 117 and whose product is equal to 169 multiplied by 20 AC. For this part, we will split it into prime factors. We know that 169 is 13 by 13 by this 20 can be split into 2 into 5 into 2. So this is what the set of 5 numbers is available with us, all the prime factors. We have to partition these into two parts whose sum is equal to 117. With a little guess, we can see that if we combine 13 and 5 into one partition and if we put these three into another, then what are these two numbers? 65 and this is 52 and now if we add them, we will get 117. But since a minus sign is already there, so we will see that these two numbers will have to have minus sign. So minus 65 multiplied by minus 52 is equal to 169 by 20 whatever. I am not calculating it because I have already factorized it and obtained my two numbers and I am sure their product will be same because these two numbers are obtained by partitioning these prime factors only. Now 65 and 52 they add to 117 and their product becomes this one. So these are the two numbers that I was looking for. So the solution will be first number divided by minus of a which is minus 20. So this becomes 65 by 20 which we can now see is that this can be now cancelled on 5. 5, 4. So this is one answer and the second answer will be minus 52 by 20 which by minus 20 which becomes 52 by 20. This can also be cancelled on uh, 4. 4, 5s are 20 and 4, 13s are 52. So this is the answer. We don't have to go to step 3 because our answer is already with us. Let us move on to our next question now. The question is 2x square minus 4 plus square root of 13 into x plus 2 square root of 13 equal to 0. This equation is already flat. There are no denominators, so we don't have to carry on our first step. Now for our second step, we have to find two numbers whose sum is equal to what? This b, that is minus 4 plus square root of 13 and whose product is equal to, product is equal to this, this is a multiplied by this 
which is 2 into 2 into square root of 13 that is 4 square root of 13. About this you are obviously clear. This was also asked in one of the previous year's questions, question papers. You can't imagine how simple this question was. The sum of two numbers has to be this and the product of them have to be this. We can obviously see that both the numbers are minus 4 and minus 13. If you multiply them, this minus and minus becomes plus and if you add them, they will add to minus 4 plus square root of 13. Nobody can examine or can imagine how simple this question was. So now, what is the solution? Minus 4 divided by minus of a which is equal to this minus minus cancels and 2 4 this becomes 2 and minus square root of 13 by again minus a that is minus 2 which is equal to square root of 13 by 2. So simple it was. Many people get scared of these square roots. So these question happen to be simpler. Let us now take more questions on square roots so that your fear is reduced. Let us move on to our next question. The next